Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest what is going on up in the stratosphere and how the upcoming stratospheric warming, major southern stratospheric warming, could be impacting our surface conditions for the end of the month. Now we did do a video a few days ago having a look at the sudden stratospheric warming saying it was highly likely and now with the latest data through it looks pretty much guaranteed with the latest GFS ensembles here as you can see on the polar vortex status page on the weatheriscool.com giving a probability of 100% um, with all the ensemble members reversing those zonal mean winds um, to negative uh, i.e. easterly winds um, for at least a day so reaching that sudden stratospheric warming level. So we'll run through what the latest data is showing for the sudden stratospheric warming. We'll do that quite quickly as, of course, we have alluded to that quite a bit over the last few stratospheric videos. But we also concentrate a lot on some data for the end of this month, or at least the next sort of two to four weeks. We got an ECMWF dump of data yesterday. We do every Monday and Thursday. And some of the data we're seeing from the ECMWF and even some of the GFS ensembles today are suggesting that they are starting to latch on to the southern stratospheric warming propagating through the atmosphere and starting to perhaps give some impacts with some blocking appearing and even on some of the ensemble members of the GFS some really quite bitterly cold weather starting to appear the last few days of February so we'll allude to that in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well the links in description so instead, if we start on the weather is cool, we'll go through some of these charts now. But as I said, you can see here that we've got a 100% chance now of seeing a sudden stratospheric warming from the latest GFS ensembles. And if we look at those on a line chart, you can see here pretty much all of them now get down towards zero or lower than that. Um, or all of them do for at least a day within the next sort of week or so. So the sudden stratospheric warming looks likely to be arriving just about a week's time give or take a day or two, again different ensemble members have slightly different timings for it, but all are down to that zero or lower for at least a day, some keeping us well below zero for quite a period of time, maybe two thirds of the ensembles here, some recovering us back um, into sort of normal polar vortex winds, uh, so into the positive territory, but not particularly positive. So real obliteration of the stratospheric polar vortex uh, coming up within the next week or so. Again, if we look at the slices through the atmosphere, you can see this huge easterly flow coming up high up in the stratosphere in around a week's time, perhaps starting around the 15th, 16th, and really dominating through the 17th, 18th. And you can see there's even a bit of a secondary warming and a secondary reversal of those winds. They don't really recover, but go even more negative, perhaps, uh, towards the end of the month, the last few days of the month. So a real sustained warming period and sustained sudden stratospheric warming appearing here. Now, the one thing is it's not propagating through the atmosphere all too much on this latest GFS chart. It does a bit. Uh, right now, we're only seeing it high up in the atmosphere, around 1 HPA, then it gets down to sort of 10 HPA, and the minus 10 anomalies, as you can see on the right-hand chart, start to get down to sort of 100 HPA um, towards the end of the uh, of the time frame here. But again, this is one GFS operational run for the midnight run. Uh, for the midnight run. So, of course, it's not going to... Uh, give all the scenarios here but here it is getting down the atmosphere but not fully by the end of the month so we'll just have to see how it does propagate through but as i said sudden stratospheric warming looking guaranteed now and it could be quite a sustained warming with a strong reversal of those zone mean winds perhaps for a week or so or more giving the state of some of these charts a real real big warming but we'll only really remember it if we see something towards the surface in the next few weeks now if we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles as well these are for the stratospheric winds you can see next week around the 17th to the 19th all ensemble members are getting even below the minus 5 area so below 5 meters per second um, in the easterly direction some of you down to minus 10 minus 15 or even minus 20 and they do keep us negative uh, for quite a period of time most until the end of the month some rising for the last days of the month but most the average keeping us down below zero until perhaps the first week of March and even then only really strengthening those polar vortex winds to 
below average um, as we head into the middle of March. Of course, normally we see a, a, a quite a big stratospheric warming in March, April time as the polar vortex comes to its end as we start to transition into summertime. So it's looking likely perhaps here that we don't really see a recovery and this could aid that possibility of a very blocked and maybe cold end to the winter and start to the spring and could even prolong further than that. So yeah, we've had a look at all the stratospheric charts and you see it's pretty much guaranteed now we're going to be seeing a sudden stratospheric warming and quite a prolonged stratospheric warming with those zonal mean winds in that easterly direction, in the negative territory for quite a period of time. But if we do now go over to have a look at some of the data that could suggest cold weather coming up towards the end of the month. Now, if we do start on the MJO here, something we have alluded to back in January when we were looking at that colder spell we actually saw in the, towards the end of January, and the MJO did forecast that pretty well. Um, again, it is not directly linked to the stratospheric warming, but it could aid the blocking that we're going to be seeing most likely from the sudden stratospheric warming um, affecting the UK. Now, the MJO is... Uh, is convection basically taking place through uh, mid-latitudes. Um, and again, it's not really directing, directly impacting the UK, what actually has what happens with it, but it's the effects we see from different phases of the MJO. And the different phases are basically saying where the plume is, and of course its strength as well. Now again, don't want to go into too much detail, it's quite complicated, and I have done it in a previous video back in January, so do check that out if you're interested. But the big thing we need to know here is phases six, seven, and eight generally do accompany more amplification of the jet stream, more ridging further northwards, and perhaps a negative NAO, i.e. more blocking in the North Atlantic, perhaps extending towards Greenland. Now the forecast chart here, you can see by day five, trending into, into uh, phase six, and by day 10 and day 15, the majority are in phases seven and eight. So again, this has got nothing to do with the sudden stratospheric warming, really. This is just happening independently of that, but it could aid any of that blocking as the MJO normally has a sort of a lag effect of a couple of weeks. So this would favor the end of February and start of March for more Atlantic ridging. Again, it could just give us some brief northerly spells, stuff like that. But with the stratospheric warming going on, with blocking likely to appear in the Northern Hemisphere over the North Pole, this uh, this MJO going into the phase six, seven, and eight, which does happen pretty much every month or two, we are likely to see um, that potentially uh, uh, sort of connecting with the blocking over the North Pole, perhaps giving us an increased risk of a blocked Atlantic. Now, if you go over to some different charts, have a look. Uh, something we did look at a few days ago. These are the weather regime frequencies. So in blue, you've got the positive NAO. Uh, red, you've got an Atlant uh, a Scandinavian block. Green, you've got a negative NAO. Uh, purple, ATR, so Atlantic Ridge. And grey, no regime, so kind of in between. And each bar represents the probability or the amount of ensemble members going for it. And then you've got the hatch, uh, the hashed... Uh, and then you've got the shaded in block right at the bottom. That is showing the most likely situation from the majority of ensemble members. If you're looking for a stormy, perhaps mild sort of spell of weather, you'll be looking for blue blocks at the bottom. We're not seeing that all too much. We're seeing red over the next week or so, and that's pretty much what we've been seeing in our daily videos with blocking over the top of us. But again, nothing too cold. So again, red doesn't always mean cold weather, but it means higher pressure involved. But as we head towards the last week of the month and start of March, all we're seeing is purples and reds dominating, really. Again, suggesting that we're going to see some Atlantic ridging and perhaps that extending into some more northern blocking. Towards the end of the month, it's looking likely to be more purple, so Atlantic ridging. Again, that could be connected to the MJO. And then as we head into early March, more red blocking, Scandinavian blocking, and that could be linked to the stratospheric warming. We can't say directly um, how these things all come together, but we can look at likelihoods and say through the end of February and start of March, a lot of these ECMWF ensemble members do have some form of more application to the jet stream, some form of blocking, and perhaps routes to colder weather. Again, not forecasting anything substantial here, but definitely signs perhaps of something colder appearing as I said, towards the end of this winter and start of spring. But we will have to see exactly how it does.
play out. Now, if we go over to some more ECMWF charts, we'll have a look at the weekly mean anomalies for the 500 HPA. Now, if we actually go over to the North Pole and have a look what it is producing, you can see at the moment we've got a lot of blues over the North Pole, again, showing low pressure, quite a bit of substantial um, low pressure systems, and the tropospheric polar vortex is pretty well connected. You see over the top of us now, we've got these oranges, that's higher pressure, and the Atlantic jet stream as well to our north. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing generally uh, high pressure at the top of us, a bit of southerly flow, generally quite mild for the next week. If we do progress further through this, you can see that we maintain that um, high pressure over the top of us, perhaps ridging more towards the Atlantic. So over the last week of the month, could be seeing more northerly winds, perhaps. But again, nothing too substantial here without blocking, not getting too far, for, uh, too much further northwards than Iceland and southern Greenland. Into the first week of March, like, ooh, the last few days of February into the first week of March, look what happens over the North Pole. Huge oranges starting to appear, and blue is getting shoved out, especially towards North America. That is something we're seeing from this ECMWF data, uh, as we'll see in a minute, actually, with some more um, temperature data. Definitely suggesting that the ECMWF thinks there could be a big blob of cold air exiting the Arctic into North America. So if there's anyone from North America watching this, the Eastern WF today definitely, or yesterday's data is definitely suggesting there could be some very cold weather towards the start of March as a result of the Southern Stratospheric Warming. For the UK here, high pressure to our north, and this would produce easterly winds. You can't say exactly what it would produce, but most likely easterly or northerly winds. Beyond that, Look what happens, huge blocking from the 6th to the 13th over the North Pole and low pressure diving out into the mid-Atlantic through America, blocking down the East Coast. Again, this is all suggesting a northerly wind for North America. For the UK, low pressure well to our south, high pressure to our north, a southerly tracking jet stream. This could be pretty cold and snowy. No beast from the east, though. I must stress that. We'd be seeing much stronger higher pressure over Scandinavia um, and Siberia. This is more positioned further northwards, again, pushing the jet stream further southwards. Beyond that, continuation of that, um, higher pressure over towards Greenland, again suggesting more of a northerly flow than any easterly flow. So that's something we're definitely seeing from this data, perhaps more northerlies and Greenland highs uh, and Atlantic ridging than any Scandinavian high and beast from the east scenario. That is what I'm seeing from these weekly anomalies. Uh, beast from the east, as I said, you'd see these uh, uh, low pressure signals over central Europe and you'd see these oranges sat over Scandinavia in a direct easterly not what we're seeing here. And if we do finish up, I just have a look at the last week of March. Again, huge blocking over the northern hemisphere. Low pressure trying to ride up from the southwest. This could go mild, depending on the exact position of the low pressure, but it is equally potentially cold and snowy if we see cold air dig in. But again, it's extended range stuff. We'll have to see how it does play out. Also wanted to have a look at the temperatures. Again, these are not too reliable, as in the longer term, the anomalies do become a lot weaker. But you can see here, Cold over the North Pole at the moment, with quite mild conditions over North America and most of Northwest Europe. As we had to see with last week of February, you can see cold air still over the North Pole, the UK sort of in between. And as I said, into that first week of March, look at all these blue anomalies through North America. This is what I mean, it could go very cold through North America, the UK sort of in between, not showing anything too brutally cold, but generally average into the first week of March, and normally it's weaken more, but looking unlikely to be very cold through North America. So this ECMWF data definitely suggesting very cold air for North America. But as we head progressively through March, you can see a bit more of a colder signal towards Northwest Europe, either whites or some blue hints just to the north of Scotland, perhaps indicating northerly winds. Again, things will change, blocking positioning will change, but I just wanted to emphasise here that the ECMWF data, as in a minute we'll see in the GFS data, is starting to pick up on some effects perhaps of this sudden stratospheric warming and right towards the end for the last week here. You can see a very similar signal, blues just to our north towards Scandinavia again, perhaps northerly winds appearing here. Now, I do finally want to just finish on the GFS ensembles. Again, this is something we look at normally in most of the videos. You can see for the next two weeks or so, it's pretty average to above average, really, with quite minimal precipitation. High pressure over the top of us, pretty decent conditions. 
However, if we look towards the last three or four days of this run, we see quite a few, perhaps maybe a quarter of those ensemble members down to the minus five, to minus ten, or even lower than that. Some very cold runs appearing here. Again, could just be hinting at here. Could just be picking up on the effects of the sudden stratospheric warming. I definitely think those signals will increase rapidly within the next sort of week or so. But perhaps today, just seeing those first glimmers of blocking right in the extended range. Again, we'll have to see exactly what comes of that. But here, definitely seeing hints of that. And you can see it from the very low dew points. Very cold air heading into the UK here on some of the Ontario members in the last few days of February. But we, of course, will have to see. I do just want to have a look at a couple of these runs. For example, go to this one here, Ensemble Member 27. You can see that big um, Atlantic Ridge and bitterly cold northerly winds. If we do run back and have a look at a different run, this is number 12. Very similar, higher pressure towards the North Atlantic, towards Greenland, and northerly winds. So as I said, not producing anything too uh, cold in terms of a beast from the east pattern, but more of a northerly pattern. Here again, blocking towards the North Atlantic, more up towards Iceland, and a north to northeasterly. Again, from here, uh, from ensemble member number 15. So these cold ensemble members definitely are potentially picking up on that sudden stratospheric warming, um, but they are definitely favouring more of an Atlantic ridge to Greenland high than any Scandinavian high. I'm just looking at them just then. So again, that will have to that that will, that will change things. Again, doesn't look likely a beast from the east from this latest data, but who knows what could happen. But regardless, it is suggesting there is a chance of cold weather as we progress through. So yes, just to summarise the video, definitely looking like we're seeing a sudden stratospheric warming next week. Pretty much guaranteed now. Hundred percent of the ECMWF and the GFS ensemble members are forecasting it, and we are now starting to see hints of perhaps some cold weather towards the end of the month and start of March, or at least some blocking. The latest ECMWF data is suggesting for the UK, perhaps a Greenland high and more Atlantic ridging. Again, northerly winds, no real signs of any Scandinavian high, which would produce uh, easterly winds or perhaps a beast from the east. So not looking at that sort of scenario yet, but as I said, we're very early days and definitely looking likely it could be very cold in North America from the ECM. WF data with some very cold air plunging out of Canada down into the United States. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as well as downstream that could have some impacts on the UK. It's going to be very interesting uh, sort of next couple of weeks watching this and watching how this does evolve. I can guarantee you we're going to be seeing a lot of model wobbling. We're going to be seeing some very extreme, most likely probably GFS charts within the next week or two. Yes, there probably will be some beasts in these charts. There'll probably be some other various cold charts as well. And we're just going to have to decipher and see what is going to happen. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Of course, there's no guarantees of cold weather with a sudden stratospheric warming, but there is uh, quite a decent chance, I must say. So we'll have to see what happens. And make sure you do stay tuned as we'll keep you updates every single day. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.